One of the things the government seems to be it seems to be banking its hopes on is a very sharp V-shaped recovery. A V-shaped recovery means you go down, you come up, and you come up really sharp. Dr. Montek Singh Aluwalia, do you buy this contention that we won't have a slow recovery, we won't have a double dip, there won't be a W, instead there'll be a sharp recovery? What's your understanding? Well, I don't think we have enough information to judge whether it will be a sharp recovery. Let me say that, you know, the first thing to know is when is the lockdown going to be completely removed? I mean, for example, we're beginning to relax it. We have to relax it also in the red zones. If we relax it in the red zones and the infection rate goes up, are we going to reintroduce the lockdown or are, are we going to allow the infection rate to be higher? That depends on whether we've done enough work to make sure that the health infrastructure can deal with the infection. We don't know how much success we have had in that. So frankly, I would hope that it's a V-shaped recovery. Uh, I wouldn't rule that out because, you know, if the virulence of the virus goes down, if the summer heat reduces its uh, uh, ability to transmit, then we could have a much quicker return to normalcy. But equally, the epidemiologists say that that can't be assured. And it's quite possible that it goes down and then comes back again. So these are areas of uncertainty. <clears throat> and unless we have a clear judgment, and that has to be an expert judgment, it's very difficult to tell whether you're going to have a V-shaped recovery. One thing is very clear. In the first quarter, you're going to have a large negative GDP growth. When I say negative, I mean substantial. Because for 60% of the areas dealing with 60% of have an the GDP, sir? total lack. Do you have an estimate for how bad could it get in the first quarter of this year? I don't have a quarter by quarter estimate, but you know, I, my own view is that we would be well advised to, as it were, hope for the best and plan for the worst. And planning for the worst, in my view, implies accepting either 0% growth of GDP for the current year, or even a marginally negative up to say 2%. You know, some people are going much beyond that. I know that the IMF has said 1.9, but you know, the IMF calls that a, a, a very optimistic outcome. I mean, that's the upper end of the outcome from their point of view, it's not the base outcome. And they have other outcomes that are much more negative for the world and they haven't translated what that means for India. So we should plan on at least 0%. Now, you know, if you want to, make a credible projection of your own macroeconomic strategy uh, to the rating agencies, to the rest of the world, you should make it clear, how are you going to handle the situation when there is 0% growth in GDP, when the budget was based on the assumption of 7% growth in real terms and 10% growth in nominal terms. Now, obviously what's going to happen is a big reduction in the revenues that come in, it's also true, even if the COVID thing comes to an end, I don't think the climate for disinvestment will recover very quickly. So you won't get what you were hoping to get on disinvestment revenues. And you will be spending more on support for the poor, plus something on health. Now, all of this put together easily accounts for a deterioration in the central government GDP of something of the order of three plus percentage points. This means that the central government's fiscal deficit will become 6% or a little more. You've got the same problem on the state side, because the states will have a loss of revenues of somewhere between 2 and 3% of their GDP. They will have to make up for some of this by borrowing. I don't think they have much scope for cutting expenditure. They typically tend to delay salaries, etc., but they'll do some of that. But if you allow for the states also to borrow, then the macroeconomic situation of the central government or the India, India macroeconomic situation has to be a deterioration, deterioration in the general government fiscal deficit of something of the order of 5 to 6 percent of GDP. What's the quantum of the stimulus clean. that India can afford? How do you think India should finance that stimulus? Which are the sectors do you think India should be focusing on? Well, let me explain, you know, to call this stimulus is wrong because most of this is simply maintaining your expenditure while revenues go down. That's not the same thing as a stimulus. Usually a stimulus is what you do extra in terms of expenditure. So the question arises, can India afford uh, an additional fiscal deficit of, let's say, 6% of GDP or let's say 5% of GDP 
taking the center and the states together. Now, all that this does is it raises the debt to GDP ratio by about five percentage points starting next year. Now, my view would be that we should out, we should lay out a macroeconomic strategy, which first of all recognizes this. You know, one of the problems at the moment is we have no official indication of what the fiscal deficit is going to be in the current year. So you can't judge what the government is planning to do without knowing what the fiscal deficit is. I think that should be made very clear. By, I mean, you can, you can have one or two scenarios, but you should be operating in that area so you lay out your cards on the table. Second is that if you recognize this, then your credibility in world markets, and that is important. I mean, I don't think we should just say fiscal deficits don't matter. The credibility depends on your laying out a strategy for bringing the fiscal deficit down next year. And we're not going to have such a huge fiscal deficit next year. So that requires a very credible statement on what's going to happen to expenditure. But most of all, it requires a very credible statement of what you're going to do on tax revenues. Because, you know, the biggest weakness at the moment in India is that our tax revenues are about five to six percentage points below what is regarded as our taxable capacity. How do we bring this about? How do we correct this? Not, in my view, by jacking up uh, tax rates, not by bringing in sudden new taxes, I think we need to recognize that the time has come for serious tax reform, both on direct taxes and on indirect taxes.